So this is day 53 of uh, Mahmoud Ahmed Musafir's journey, struggle, quest for basic rights, fundamental rights here in AJK, a territory which is ambiguous in many senses. Uh, the status of this territory, constitutionally speaking, legally speaking, is um, in total ambiguity. and. Um, I don't want to discuss uh, Pakistan's role too much, uh, except to say that um, the perception that Pakistan has spread here over the past 70 years is that the UN, <clears throat> in some shape or form, has given Pakistan the responsibility to administer this territory. Um, no doubt uh, Pakistan is de facto controlling this territory um, and administering it. Um, but. It has total control, but it has zero responsibility. And this whole effort of Mahmoud Ahmed Musafir to walk over 350 kilometers with three donkeys and a camel um, is partly to reflect uh, the point that the people living in this territory are unable uh, or are prevented in many uh, ways from uh, asserting their rights. And um, the result is that 70 years on, 71 years on, uh, the people here do not have freedom of expression. The people here, when they try and resolve uh, various matters of public interest, they are ignored or they are pushed aside. Um, whatever letters that people write, I can speak from my, from my own experience that whenever I've written any letters to either the Federation of Pakistan or the AJK government, I've never ever received any response of any kind, um, irrespective of how serious uh, matters are. So Mahmoud Saab is trying his very best in very creative ways to try and get the local administration here, which in itself is powerless and which is totally controlled uh, by, by the Federation of Pakistan, he is trying to explain to these guys, look, there's no point just discussing matters with me because ultimately you will say that, you know, we don't have the power to resolve these matters. So why don't you get um, representatives of Pakistan's federation to participate in these talks? I mean, if they are, have the total power in this region, then uh, they must also be able to face responsibility and face questions for the way that they are administering this territory. Um, we, as uh, students of history um, and as students of the modern age, we have understood that whatever happened in 1947, um, it can be said with a great deal of clarity that the Maharaja, um, who was controlling this territory, as an autocrat, uh, his own wishes were for this state to be similar in structure to Switzerland, um, especially in terms of its neutrality amongst powerful neighbors. And he was also of the opinion, or he wanted, uh, powers to be transferred from an autocratic uh, dimension to a democratic dimension. And there was already an assembly here. I mean, in fact, even three elections took place before 1947. So all the various uh, events that happened in 1947, sequence by sequence, if we look at them, um, the people were always told um, that ultimately the people of this territory will be the arbiters or the deciders of their future. Now that has never happened. Um, we are stuck between two powerful neighbors, um, two neighbors who have their own narratives and depending on which side of the divide you live on, you have to conform to that particular narrative. Um, and whatever India's position is with reference to the solution of uh, Jammu and Kashmir, ultimately they talk about a bilateral uh, a structure involving both India and Pakistan with uh, no space for the people living within. And um, they would rather speak to Srinagar or perhaps even um, not only the, the, the assembly in Srinagar, but um, the alternative uh, sh political shape, which essentially is sponsored by pa Pakistan, but uh, is also the very uh, Hurriyat organization which India gives uh, 
uh, credence to either directly or indirectly speaking. Um, and um, on this side, um, Pakistan's position today, and it has always been, is that it's giving a perception that somehow everything is jammed and locked until um, the disputed nature of this territory is resolved through UNCIP resolutions. Now, uh, it doesn't tell people that those UNCIP resolutions um, in their suggestions, and, and they were non-binding suggestions under Chapter 6, um, you know, there's no concept of uh, uh, imposing uh, uh, um, those, those suggestions um, by force, uh, unlike Chapter 7. Um, so, when Pakistan is not uh, fulfilling its part of the obligation to the international community, and it's not fulfilling any obligations here, then it puts us into a very, very difficult situation. And Mahmoud Saab's struggle is basically trying to reflect that. And uh, we hope uh, that our citizens who live uh, abroad uh, and those citizens here who understand English can carefully consider uh, these points that I'm trying to make. And I'm trying to make them in a nutshell, in a summary. Uh, and I hope the international community can also monitor and watch this. We're not asking for any help from the international community. We're just asking the international community to have a look, to monitor um, and to recognize that whatever we're trying to do is something totally indigenous and we're trying to use local resources uh, and we're trying to use the resources of our diaspora in order to uh, gradually, uh, bit by bit, solve this problem. Thank you very much for watching.